So I've been uh, stuck inside for a while, working on the website for one, adventurine.com. Check it out if you haven't already. Um, that took a lot of work and a lot of desk-bound time. So finally getting back outside. Um, no real plans today, just kind of wanting to hang out in the desert and uh, kind of check this out. It's, it's probably going to rain on me today, um, and that's okay. I welcome that and maybe get some foraging on. I don't know, just going to see what, what happens. Found some of this Mormon tea. It always tastes better right after a good rain. Um, so I'm gonna gather some of this. Man, look how dark and green that is. What about something to do with it hanging out in the by this rock, like in the shade or something? So I'm only getting a light sprinkle right now, but if you can look out over there, looks like fog. That's all rain coming in probably get hit pretty good here in a bit um, a lot of stuff to forage out right now though so I might poke around the uh, blue dicks those little flowers that have the bulbs I've, I've harvested them on other videos um, those are out so I might get a couple of those I already got some Mormon tea which is my uh, desert tea I like to drink um, see what else around here lots of little wildflowers popping up too so pretty cool I thought that rain was heading right for me, but it kind of moved off in that direction. And I actually got a little bit of sun peeking through. I think I got some wild oats right here. They're not quite ready. I've never actually harvested this stuff, but uh, cause I never find very much of it. Found some miner's lettuce. Not very much of it, but uh, I don't find this out here very much. It's delicious though. It's good because it's like nice and mild. As opposed to like being bitter like a lot of plants sometimes are. It is delicious. I'll have to see if I can find a big patch of that because that's a good one, like a good salad mix kind of thing. Found some more. It's just hidden. Yeah! So the further I crawl into these trees, the more I'm finding this is a uh, wild lettuce, which I've never actually eaten this, but it has to be um, uh, cooked because it's kind of bitter. It's like really bitter. Like sometimes you have to uh, run it through like two washes of water to kind of get some of the bitter out. So I'd mix these in with some other greens or into a soup. Maybe I'll do a soup. So I got a thistle here, nice spiky one. And the roots of these can be, uh, I wanna chop it up and throw it in a soup or something. Um, they're best when they're young. This one's already starting to get its flowering stock. But I'm gonna give it a try and see how they are. I mean, there's always a best season for, for different plants, but I like to see kind of what you know how bad it really is because a lot of things can still be eaten they're usually just get more woody and fibrous as it goes yeah this little tap root right here is what I'm after chop that up see if we can add some flavor it doesn't look too woody might be okay Got a big patch of wild oats right here. I think I think you want them a little bit lighter, like a tan color, um, before they're ready. So I'm gonna leave them alone, but uh, it's cool to find so many of them here.
This is what the little roots of the blue dicks look like. It's called a corm, kind of like a little onion bulb. Um, you just peel that outer part up, roast them up. You can even eat them raw. Um, these are really good. These clouds are uh, blotting out the sun quite a bit. It's getting pretty dark. Hearing some thunder too in the distance. But I found some chickweed down in this little uh, garden. So I'm going to drop down in there and uh, gather some of that up. Um, I'm going to try to put this together tonight for like a, a little wild salad because I got the wild lettuce, the miner's lettuce, um, chickweed, and then I'll chop up that. Eh, I might chop up that. Uh, thistle root and put it in there we'll see how that goes maybe i'll roast it i don't know i'll figure it out but anyway lots of good wild stuff going on today there's some thunder so as it turns out this uh lightning situation is like right here I just had one crack like right above me. So I'm going to descend in elevation. So I'm not the highest point out on this thing. And I might tuck into my little cave over here. Cause I don't want to go home yet. Ooh. Not a good echo to it. Let's bring down the rain. Getting things shaken. Keeping my little home away from home. One of my favorite spots. Hang out here for a bit. This rain might be coming right in. Oh, there it is. So it looks like a... Yeah! I'm not sure exactly how safe this situation is, but I'm, I'm liking it right now. Rain's dumping down, I got some shelter here. I even have... What is this called? This is, uh, this is um, pepper grass or something like that. I just learned about that. I just... Um, Got like a little peppery taste to it. I haven't been able to find any of it. Yeah. But it's right here. Right in my little shit. Oh, very peppery. It's kind of like shepherd's purse. In Idaho, I found some shepherd's purse. It's probably a cousin. Yeah, I'll put this in that salad for sure. I keep missing it on the camera, but uh, there's some serious lightning cracking like right overhead. It's like ripping the sky. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but the the rain is getting like driven by the wind. So you can see it in like curtains. It looks like curtains like rippling across this way. Right over there. So it's kind of cool to think about, especially on a day like this, um, where it could be easy to think that nature is out to kill you. <laughs> um, you know, because there's some pretty pretty wild storms that can happen. 
um, this isn't this is mild compared to some of the stuff that nature can do but um well there is like dangers and things like that like it's pretty cool i've been walking around like gathering all kinds of food it's like a grocery store out here only not as crowded as the ones uh lately um but yeah i mean nature nature has its risks and its dangers and things like that but um definitely not out to out to kill us like there's I doubt it's protecting me from the lightning here with this little natural cave. Um, I'm filling Ziplocs up with food to bring home. Um, which means to make fire out here, to stay warm. It's cool that cooperation kind of between human and, and nature. A lot of times we create this separation. We do it in our own brains, you know, thinking that nature's here and we're here and where do we fit in the mix but we're very much in the mix i i believe and uh whenever i get feeling that way like that's where i really feel that cool connection you know when we talk about being connected with nature or whatever um this is it it's that oneness you know it's a uh, it's that being a part of it and uh cooperating uh with it it's pretty cool to feel even just that little bit of connection with something so wild and, and raw uh, kind of makes you take a step back and, and think about the wild and raw stuff that uh, is at our most solid core part of us you know it's just cool thunderstorm seems to be heading more that way it's getting more distant and the mega cracks aren't happening as frequent now Pretty cool to be able to feel that in the air though, the thunder. A video might be getting a little blurry. I'm having a hard time keeping my my camera lens clear um, of the water. The lightning's backing off a little bit, so I'm venturing out of my cave a bit to check out some of this stuff. Some more greens down in here. Let's see what else is growing around here. These these uh, blue dick bulbs are the stems of the plant are really fragile, so like. Um, and you got to dig down a ways to get to them. Well, this one's up underneath a rock too. So it's hard to get down deep enough without breaking off the stem and losing your... Oh, like I just did. The greens are edible too. I'll take those. Yeah, I still see it though. Where is it? Luckily this ground is nice and wet, it's making the digging a lot easier. There we go. A few of them there. Pretty good sized ones too. So these guys aren't uh, edible, but uh, they're getting ready to flower. These are one of my favorite. It's a species of Dudleya, um, sometimes called live forever, probably because of the way they cling to the cliff sides and stuff a lot of times. Really pretty flower though, these are uh, the tips of the, kind of almost like an aloe vera kind of thing, a succulent kind of thing. And it, uh, these will turn like a fiery color later on in the spring. Really cool plants though. So the chance of sudden death by lightning has gone down enough that I'm venturing out of my little cave shelter to search for more delicious edibles and to get my wander on. This rain is kind of nice, wet obviously, but fun change.
I always like how these Palo Verde hold on to the raindrops like this. Here's some of that Dudleya that I was talking about. It's a little further along in that flowering stage. Pretty cool little flower. Those will open up though and they'll keep that dark red on the outside and then the yellowy orange on the inside. So it's like really fiery like some lupine. Always love seeing the lupine coming out. That big thunderstorm went, went over that way. Uh, but I'm hearing some distant thunder. I think in that dark, I, I can't quite see the cloud system there. I think it's just beyond that. So uh, I'll have to keep an eye out, see if that thing rolls in. But I might get round two here a little bit. Some nice Mormon tea here. Birds are starting to come back out after that uh, big storm passed through. I like being a part of that. I like being here during the storm stuff um, or different things like that, you know, changes in nature. A lot of times we go and, you know, go inside, shut the doors kind of thing, but if you can stay out for it, uh, it's the the things that happen during those times and also like immediately after as the animals and birds and all that stuff start to come out the drips hanging on the palo verde even that these are short-lived moments that you don't you don't see otherwise it's cool to be a part of it starting to see those clouds rolling up over this Looks like they're mostly heading this way, but uh, there might be some more that are popping up here. Probably turn around and start heading back pretty soon. Uh, maybe, maybe try to dodge this one. Not too concerned about the storm itself, just uh, might be good timing. This lichen is really awesome. It, like, uh, it's not always this neon green color. Like A lot of times it'll go almost a dead brown and it looks like it's totally lifeless. But it just knows how to how to survive when there's rain when there's moisture for it it'll uh it'll come right back to life and soak that stuff up when it's not there it knows how to go dormant and make the most of things when during those times this moss right here too the same thing it'll be it'll be all brown and appear almost dead and then uh get some rain it greens right up and it makes as you look out you can just see green all over some of it's from the spring growth we're getting but uh even the rocks themselves you know are are green from the lichens and the moss and stuff right now found a whole pantry full of chickweed oh look at this all hanging out protected from the rain and the sun So I'm, uh, I'm heading back, just got a little ways to go before I get to my vehicle again. Um, it's been fun out here though, my, my intention for coming out was just to kind of get here and be with nature. So the rain and the thunder and all that, just felt like nature was coming to me kind of thing, so it was, feels good at being out here. Especially like I said earlier, having been stuck at the house for a while and at the desk, boring stuff there. But um oh yeah but check out the website uh i'll have more stuff going on there when my book comes out that's one of the reasons i have that website it'll uh show up there so working on getting that finished off i was able to forage a bunch of stuff today i didn't grab a whole lot as far as quantity um like i didn't i'm not bringing home a feast but i wanted to bring home at least a variety of things so i can kind of experiment with it and see how the different flavors work together and what stuff i like Cause some of them are new for me um, haven't done the wild lettuce before, so that's a new one. Um, but yeah, I was able to get a pretty good variety. I don't know if I'll do like a soup kind of deal or a, just a salad or 
I don't know. Might just uh, make them all up separately and so I can sample them. So I was on my way back and I came across this uh, prickly um, pear cactus. And this piece, there's a few pieces that are laying on the ground. This one actually looked pretty good. I made a cut on it to see. So it's just going to sit here and rot unless I take it home and eat it. So I'm going to um, prep this up real quick so I don't get spines all over my backpack. My wife doesn't like it when I track glockets into the house. Um, pretty reasonable. But, uh, yeah, the only problem is this early in the season, these are usually pretty fibery. But it doesn't look too bad. I don't know. I'm going to try it. So this knife is the LT Wright Next Gen. It's like the little brother of the Genesis, if you're familiar with that one. Um, both the Genesis and this one are my favorite for prepping cactuses. And really it's just because they uh, LT Wright leaves the spine super sharp on these, which makes it great for uh, um, getting the spines off. And it pulls the glockids right out. Otherwise you gotta go in with each one and kind of carve them out by hand with the point of the knife. Um, and a Scandinavian grind is actually pretty good too for getting those out because you can you can get in there and cut and then just slice it right out. So it actually works pretty good. I mean, you can do it with anything. Pull it off of the rock. It just as far as efficiency and um, and all that. Then I really like uh, this knife for that. So this rain is starting to catch up with me. I don't think I'm going to get too much, but this cactus prep thing kind of takes a little while, so I can't quit now though. I'm so close. Once I get the main glockids and spines off, um, what I usually do is uh, I'll just cut the perimeter. That way I don't have to mess with, with these guys here around the edge because they're, they're kind of a pain to get out. But yeah, just using the spine like this really removes a lot of them. It pulls them out by the roots kind of thing. And some of the, um, a lot of the spines will just knock right off too during the process. So I already got a lot of this, the glockids out of there. But, you know, no one wants to eat glockids. So you can always just, as I was saying, just poke in there gently and swipe it away. Rain's coming down a little more now. But I'm almost done. I'll clear off this side. And then I can uh, take the outer portion out. I think I got it cleaned off pretty good. Most of those glockets are out, so now I'm just going to do a little perimeter cut. Get rid of those outer ones. And that should be good to toss it in the pack and bring it home. Nope. I'm almost back to my vehicle and the rain's starting to come down. 